Welcome to Metro Scene. I'm Taria Everett. The songwriting duo Ashford and Simpson was one of the greatest of all time. The legendary Valerie Simpson lost Nick Ashford in 2012 and is now writing and performing solo. Recently, she performed at the Birchmere Music Hall and Marvin Jackson sat down with her backstage. All right, Valerie Simpson is with us on Metro Scene. Uh, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. All right, and um, Valerie, tell me how you got started in music. You grew up in the Bronx. Uh, yeah, but uh, my lucky break was uh, going to White Rock Baptist Church and uh, having Nick Ashford walk in the door and see me standing up there singing with some girls. Uh, he was actually <laughs> new to New York and he was uh, homeless. And mm. somebody gave him the name of Our Church because that's where you could get a free meal. <laughs> so he wasn't looking for me. Uh -huh. He was looking for that free meal. But right. he found me and I found out that he wrote gospel songs and I played the piano. So we were a natural. Wow. Yeah. And it, I've heard that you all were basically wor working together and you were friends, but you, mm -hmm did not date for a while. No, he didn't have the good sense to realize that I was a woman <laughs> for him. <laughs> no, that's not it. I think he thought, you know, I was like, that was my last year of high school, and I think I was a little bit naive, a little mm -hmm. bit young. He thought he was a man of the world. He mm -hmm. was a few years older than I. Right. And so um, he kind of put me on a hold mm -hmm. for eight years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he was from South Carolina, right? Originally, but uh -huh. he was uh, raised in Willow Run, okay. Uh, Michigan. Okay. Now, uh, when did all that change where he realized that you were the woman for him? Golly, it took uh, many boyfriends, bad boyfriends, uh, poor relationships, uh, many love songs that mm -hmm. people thought we were singing to each other and we weren't. And then finally, uh, after eight or nine years, we, you know, we came to that crossword, uh, crossroad and looked at each other and, and, and realized that there was something more than just the music between us and uh, it was a, a hard gamble to because we had such a great uh, working relationship I was like you know all my other romances had fallen by the wayside <laughs> so I didn't want to mess up this good business mm -hmm. relationship we mm -hmm. had trying to fool around with a romance mm -hmm. but my heart you know you know led me right and um, and so we went for it and when you went for it you guys made some great music together yeah. you wrote and you performed uh, do you think that uh, your relationship helped with the writing? I do. I think that uh, many songs were inspired by our personal relationship. Uh, for sure, Solid, you know, he mm -hmm. actually got that off the street from somebody, uh, a, a guy saying, hey, yo, bro, it's Solid, you know, mm -hmm. and then he said, you know, he brought it home and he said, well, you know, that feels like us. Let's work on that idea. So, you know, that's one of the ones that really came from us. Uh, there are a lot of them, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. It's funny, though, every time we'd have a, a, a song about somebody not getting along, they thought we was fighting, <laughs> you know. So they wanted to attribute everything to us, which wasn't always the case. Mm -hmm. When we did Love, Don't Make It Right, they thought we was ready for the divorce court. Wow. You know, so it's like, you know, people want to put all of their hopes and dreams on you. But in the end, you still got to live your own life, you know, and uh, I'm glad that we were able to do that. All right. Well, uh, there had to be some musicians that influenced you and Nick. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, who were they? Well, you know, being uh, a piano player, uh, uh, I was very much influenced by Nina Simone because she was uh, just a phenomenal piano player. Uh, and also Aretha Franklin, who people don't give credit for, but she is a great, great piano musician. player. Yes. Great piano player. Uh, so I, you know, I kind of studied the ladies that sang and played. To be perfect That's your only wish Ooh. One day, one day you're gonna look back You're gonna look back See all the things you missed
you guys started writing actually for Motown as well, right? Mm -hmm. And what happened there? How did you all get into Motown? Right well, there. Motown actually came to New York uh -huh. scouting talent. Mm -hmm. Somebody gave them our names, and we were fortunate enough. Well, Nick actually, you know, went up and had a meeting and showed them our demos, mm -hmm. which was, you know, just he and I and Jossie Armstead had sung on some demos together of some songs that we wrote. And uh, they were very impressed with what we had done, and they gave us that, you know, that flight ticket. <laughs> to Detroit. That was all she wrote. Mm -hmm. I was so happy. I was like, you know, it's a writer's dream to have mm -hmm. uh, a roster of artists like, you know, a Diana Ross, and <laughs> Marvin Gaye, you know, the Four <laughs> Tops. You know, they were just sitting there waiting for somebody to give them a song. Mm -hmm. So we, we felt we had just hit pay dirt. And it, it was a great experience. Any, like, special experience when you were working in Motown? Anything, any story? that you can give us? Well, I remember like even our very first production, which was we finally fought to get a production concept, uh, track so that we could produce our own songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went in down into Studio A, which is a little studio where all the hits came from. And we were nervous anyway, because this is our first time mm -hmm. uh, you know, producing a song. And Barry told us straight out, he said, all right, you wrote this song, ain't nothing like the real thing. But Harvey Fuqua and uh, them have just had two hits. Uh, they did your Ain't No Mountain High Enough and they did your uh, your Precious Love, which we also wrote. He said, so I can't take away their production just because you mm -hmm. want to produce, but I will let you produce mm -hmm. and they will produce your song. Mm -hmm. And whoever comes out the best will get the release. He said, because I know it's a hit. So we went in the studio and we looked up and then I saw Smokey Robinson and Norman <laughs> with you. Everybody's like standing there looking at, are the kids gonna pull it off? Mm -hmm. Can they do this, you know? But we were lucky uh, and our production came out really, really strong. So we got the re release. So Johnny Bristol and Harvey Fuqua had to back up just a little bit and let us in. Mm -hmm. That's all we needed. Wow. If you need me, call me. No matter where you are, favorite song wow. of all time. I've heard it by so many people. Yeah, though. I love that. Is that song done by more people than any of your songs? Or? Mm, I would think so. I would think that one probably is the most covered, you know, and mm -hmm. it's probably been in more films. I know, I know you must follow the sun wherever it leads, but if you should fall short of your desires, just remember, life holds for you one guarantee. should miss my love in one of these old days if you should ever miss the arms that used to hold you so close or the lips that touch yours so tenderly just remember remember what i told you the day i set you free you know i'll, I'll tell you an interesting story somebody sent me a clipping and uh the clipping was uh, the Ravens coach. He was questioned mm -hmm. about the night before the Super Bowl game. And the person asked him, they said, well, what did you tell your team the night before the Super Bowl to get them to perform like that? I mean, you know, we didn't expect you were going to pull it out. You know, what did you say to them? Mm -hmm. He said, I told them, ain't no mountain high enough. Wow. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough to keep us from winning this championship. That thing touched my heart, exactly. so I was like, yeah. whoa, you know, these mm -hmm. words have just reverberated and gone on and now mean something altogether different. So people take the song and use it the way they need it mm -hmm. in their lives. And they're still using it today. All and right. that's a powerful declaration. And your music is timeless. Mm. We're going to talk more about that. We're going to talk about the sugar bar. 
okay. and about your new album. All when right. We come back. All right. So don't go away. We'll be right back with Valerie Simpson. Busy day. 